See, when it comes to home lab, you do not need a fat wallet, you do not need a rack, and you do not need a massive PC running at home to power your home lab. This little PC here cost me £35 on eBay, less than a takeaway, and I absolutely love it. This is everything I need to power my home lab. And the best part is, this uses less electricity in a year than my Xeon Tower would in just a couple of weeks. So today I wanted to discuss what you should be looking for when you're starting out on your home lab journey, and I'll kind of walk you step by step as to why you should consider one of those versus maybe why you should consider one of those massive Xeon towers. See, between you and me, I would still be running this Dell tower here because I absolutely love it. It's a 10 core monster, but the electricity is honestly mind blowing. See, when I first got into home labbing, I thought I needed the biggest, the baddest, the most expensive tower rack and all this sort of stuff. And in reality, I was running a few LXE containers and that was it. Looking at my Proxmox setup, I'm running an N810 container. I'm running Uptime Kuma to monitor everything. I'm running Cloudflare and OpenWebUI. And that's it. Do not need a lot of power to run. Now going a bit deeper into this Tenzig thing here, this has a M.2 SATA. It's one of those weird fat ones, really short ones. And it also has 16 gig of RAM. Now I salvaged the 16 gig of RAM from my laptop where it was just completely dead and I needed a single stick of RAM and I ended up just pinning it into here. So this has got a four core Celeron CPU from 2020, some absolutely dead ass CPU and 16 gig of RAM, exactly what I need to run my home lab. But I could could not tell you how much time and money and effort I've wasted to get to this point. I genuinely don't think you can beat this PC for less than £40. It runs full fat Proxmox, all my Docker containers, all my LXE containers, as I've mentioned. Now I get it, this is a bit of a unicorn PC. I haven't even heard of Tenzig. And when I actually Googled them, it turns out they do some kind of commercial stuff so they're not actually even consumer grade. So as an alternative, what I think you might be looking at is some of those HP, Dell and Lenovo Microform Factor PC. You see them on the internet and because Windows 10 is going out of support in the very near future or it already has you will be able to pick these up on ebay for absolutely dirt cheap and in my opinion they are maybe a better buy you can just do so much more with it some of them support m.2 nvmes as well as hard drives so you can have a mini nas running and as i said they are going to be a more easy to find now one of the downsides obviously is going to be power draw because this really only needs about six or seven watts of cpu because it's fanless it's as i said a terrible terrible cpu but it's got four cores and as I said, for my own applications, for my needs, this is plenty. And it, most importantly, it's got a gigabit Ethernet port. So that's really all I need. Whereas if you compare that to the Microform Factor PCs, they are going to be a little bit more power hungry at 45, 50 watts. But then taking a look at my Dell 5810, yeah, that runs at about 120, 130 watts because you've got a graphics card in there. You've got obviously a power hungry CPU that I've upgraded to a 10 core 20 thread. And if you're after a room heater, by all means, get one of those. But if you're looking to just get started, and you don't know where to begin, this is one of those things that you should be looking at. But let's talk about pricing because as I said, this has cost me £35 and you might get lucky with one of these. The Dell, HP, Lenovo, Microform Factors, you'll be probably able to pick them up for similar price. Seen them for £60, £70 in good condition or you can get some battered ones without any PSU for a little bit less than that. I've been lucky to get some from some old schools so you are able to potentially reach out to some schools and they'll be decommissioning them, 7th gen CPUs and lower. So you might might be able to find an absolute bargain and if you can by all means obviously go for that now taking a look at the dell cpu as massive and as power hungry as it is and as powerful as it is keep in mind this is from 2014 so it's now 11 years old at the time of me video and it's getting a bit long in the tooth especially if you try and run windows on it you can just tell it starts to stutter it just gets a little bit slower i think it's something like 22 nanometers so it just tells you how far behind it is price wise now this is where the real magic happened it's cost me 50 55 pounds. It's got a one terabyte SSD that came with it. It's got a 1000 watt Dell power supply. It came with 32 gig of ECC memory. And to upgrade the CPU, I paid nine full pounds. So all in, I paid 64 pounds for an absolute monster. Do I need it? Absolutely not. Uh, hi, Editing Bob here. Uh, well, this is a little bit awkward. I've just been going over and doing a screen recording of how cheap the Dell Precision T 5810s are. And it turns out I got an absolute bargain by the looks of it because I cannot find a single one of those towers for 
50, 60 pounds. They're all like two, 250, even 300 pounds with very similar CPUs. So um, yeah, I got an absolute bargain because I was about to show you and go, oh yeah, look at all these towers, absolute dirt cheap. So um, yeah, no idea what's happened with the prices. So if you really wanted to, you needed a space heater, by all means go for one of those Dells. It's a Dell 5810. I will leave a link in the description below to eBay where you can pick one of those up because you can find these dirt cheap. And a lot of the times the sellers would have picked them up from schools when they're doing a recycling run. So they would have got it completely for free and I managed to negotiate mine down by like 20 pounds. I think it would have been like 70 or 80 pounds. Ended up offering 50 pounds because I thought, why have I got to lose? And yeah, 55 pounds is where we ended up. The bottom line is ultimately this. Don't make the same mistakes that I made. I at one stage had a Ryzen. I think it was an Epic something, something, something. A 64 core, 128 thread CPU. It would just sit in the living room and it would just heat the damn living room up. I think the power draw on the CPU alone was 355 watts. It was just absolutely absolutely nuts. So if you're looking to get started, look for something like this, bit of a unicorn, or potentially look for one of the Dell, Lenovo, or HP Microform Fact. They're absolutely brilliant, and they offer you just enough to get started when it comes to your home lab journey. Now, as a bit of an aside, what I've also noticed is these little NUX, the Intel NUX, I think they're 7th Gen 7260U. They're two core, four thread CPUs. They are plenty for home labs, and what they have is they have a Thunderbolt port, which I absolutely love. They have dual RAM slots, and some of them, that depends on what you find, have got two NVMe slots as well. So you might be able to do a little bit more, but obviously the CPU is going to be the limiting factor here and it won't be that much better than this, but they are around about double the price. So you'd be looking at about 60 or 70 pounds. See, what I want you to tell me in the comments is what are you running at home? What's one of those weird and wacky PCs that you have found and you are running? See, I absolutely love watching Hardware Haven and you find the most amazing and most obscure PC. Have you got something like this that I could potentially take a look at? Because this is obscure. This is one of those things. But I want to know more. I want to know, I want to hear about your use cases and I want to know what you've got running at home. Don't forget to drop me a like. Don't forget to drop me a follow. And I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one, which is going to be a very, very special video. So stay tuned.